Josie John. I'm not the author. The author is Tamal Bandopadhyay, who's, who's on my right. Uh, Tamal, let's start right away. Uh, in journalism, we have this question. Uh, whenever one of the reporters uh, pitches a story, we ask him, so what? Why should I care about the story? What is the so what answer to the book? It's an interesting subject. I think uh, there's a lot of curiosity about the group. Uh, it's, uh, it's an enigma, it's mystery. Um, you have a group which, is, which has uh, 4,000 4, plus companies in the fold. Only four of them are listed. Uh, which has continuously been uh, fighting with regulators, be it uh, Reserve Bank of India or the uh, SEBI, um, which employs, um, which is the second largest employer after Indian Railways in the country. Um, but you don't know much about it, you know, so because they are largely unlisted, so there is uh, not much of disclosure. Um, so that's one side of the story. Then um, this is a group which is hugely into cricket, into film, into patriotism. Uh, so whatever you know, appeal to average Indians, um, everything that that book, uh, that uh, that company has. So I think uh, there is enormous curiosity among all of us in India and even some parts of overseas to know something to know more about the group so there has not been anything written till now uh, so why not make an attempt of course uh, in fact i didn't know this uh, particular factoid that you threw at us that uh, it's the second largest employer in india after indian railways how big really is is sahara in terms of the people it has they claim 1 million 10 lakh uh, which both uh, direct and uh, indirect people who are, what do I say, who get benefit, you know, uh, either on the payroll or uh, in terms of uh, agency commission, so on and so forth. So, Mr. Subrata Roy Sahara, who call himself the managing worker, you know, who is the chairman of the company, um, he claims that um, 10 lakh people are dependent on the group. So that gives you a sense. That gives you a sense. Uh, um, tell us a little bit about this Parivar concept: managing worker, not chairman, not CEO. Is that just a kind of uh, you know label that he gives himself, or is that reflective of the underlying philosophy of the group? You know, it's uh, the group is headquartered in Lucknow, uh, Uttar Pradesh, and culturally is very different. Uh, when they meet each other, uh, instead of saying good morning, uh, they say Sahara Pranam. Uh, culturally, all the um, every everybody touches the feet. The young people touches the feet of the elders. Uh, what do you call it in uh, Hindi? Pailagu. Um, so it's a it's a very different kind of culture. Uh, you need to you need to uh, see it to believe it. It's very surreal. The Sahara Sahar, which is the headquarters of the uh, group at the heart of Lucknow. Um, there you, you need to see the people, how they greet each other, how they interact with each other. So it's a, it's a very different kind of thing. And the one way of saying you can, you can say that it's a very feudal. And the other way of saying is this, no, it's a very, very well-knit family culture. So there, uh, Subrata Roy does not call himself chairman. He say, call himself a managing worker. And he calls the entire thing is a parivar. All his employees are his his children, kind of things and all. So uh, it could be gimmick, it could be uh, soaked in the North India culture. But it's 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 very different. It's uh, it's not one of those uh, listed Sensex companies. Right. And uh, evidently, it is it it has worked for him certainly. In, 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 yes. In, 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 the, in terms of the growth and where he's got. Yes. Tell us, tell us a little bit about. Um, Give us that 10,000 feet view on the businesses that he runs. I know that they are into uh, non-banking financial services in that broad brush way we know in BFCs. But tell us a little bit more for benefit of people here, what exactly he does, how he makes money. 
Well, uh, Sahara, the group dabbles into in many things, you know. Um, media is one of them. They have the newspapers, uh, they have the television channels, uh, media, etc., so on and so forth. That's one part of it. Then you have they're majorly into sports. You know, they are the more than a decade now, they are the chief sponsor of Indian cricket team, Indian hockey team, and so on and so forth. Uh, so these are the things you know outside, uh, but the mainstay of their, of, they are of course now into retail, it's called Sahara Q shop, they are largely into real estate, they develop uh, real estate properties across India, so on and so forth. But if you see the mainstay of their function is, is related to finance. They once, um, at one point of time, they, uh, they tried the airline aviation industry, which failed. But uh, they are all also ran whatever the other segments call it media, aviation, uh, real estate, and all. So the 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 money, the cheap source of their revenue, I think it's uh, activities which is in the financial segment, and that activities have been continuously changing. In the 80s, when they started, they started in some form. Uh, then they got into uh, the non-banking finance companies which ran about till 2007 when Reserve Bank of India finally clamped down and asked them to shut it by 2012, 2013 and so on and so forth. And then of course uh, the, the other controversy is this, there is money through the optionally convertible OFCDs, uh, convertible debentures which, uh, reserve, which the capital market regulator is uh, looking into it. Uh, now they are running cooperative societies again uh, where they are uh, you know, pulling in money. So this is one conglomerate where the raw material is money. In, in some form or other there is a continuous flow of money from people. Now the controversy or the mystery is this, uh, where are these people, are they genuine depositors, are they uh, or is it some Benami thing, uh, you know, with Sahara holding money? Uh, uh, is, it a, is it a vehicle of money laundering? These are the questions um, uh, people have and some of these, these are the questions I try to answer in the book. You're being very coy and not telling us more. I mean, <laughs> obviously because it's not in the market as yet, so I should not reveal more, but the attempt is to demystify the persona of Subhuta Roy, to demystify uh, India's largest and largely unlisted group. So, uh, Tamil, so presumably uh, a bunch of other businessmen had the opportunity to get into the same spaces that he is in and could have built the kind of franchise that he has. Uh, I know you talk about uh, peerless uh, in, the, in the book. Why hasn't been there a second Sahara in the market? No, it's, 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 um, I, I don't think there could be any second Sahara. Um, no, I mean, because this, you need, uh, this gentleman, uh, Subhrata Roy, is unique in his own way. You know, nobody else, at least at this point of time, uh, we have seen been able to do, uh, what do you call it, regulatory arbitrage, which he has done over the past, since 80s, the group has been thriving on regulatory arbitrage. There are, this is a gentleman who is very innovative, very entrepreneurial. He always wants to do something, but he finds in regulation claustrophobia. So obviously there's a, he, he doesn't like to be regulated. And uh, what happens is this, uh, he always opens one door, uh, a new door when one door closes. So um, when the RBI door closes, uh, he opens another door. Till SEBI comes and closes that door, and when that door closes, he opens another door that is cooperative societies and all. So it's 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 very very unique way of approaching the regulators. It's a very unique way of building your business. So um, the, I don't think anybody else in Indian context has ever attempted to do that, and, and that's why is all the more interesting, all the mystery about it. You know, you you know, um, the, my attempt has has been uh, to unravel the mystery. Right. When you talk about regulatory arbitrage, if I had uh, if I had a billion dollars today, and if I had the same ambitions as Sahara, could I kind of work my way around the system to have an empire as big as he has? No, I think that's a very different context. You are saying you have a billion dollar, but this gentleman does not have a billion dollar. Sure. He, the people who give money, is people the 
people in UP, people in Northern India, people who, who speak Hindi, who, who live in Bharat, not in India. If you see that, yes, his work is throughout India, but his captive depositor base is the hinterland of India. So here is a gentleman, what does he do is this. He straddles between the two Indias, the India and Bharat. On the one side, he is into glamour, he is into cricket, which is the religion of the nation. He is into film, he is very close to all the film stars, whether it's Amitabh Bachchan or you name it. Uh, all the cricketers he is very close to. He is very patriotic. He, he, he um, observes Bharat Parvo and so on and so forth. He gives money to, uh, to the Kargil war widows. He gives money to, uh, to the widows and to the families who were killed in 9-11 uh, in Mumbai, attack in Taj Hotel, all this uh, Salaskar and Karkari, all the police officers, their families of this thing and all. So he, he inspires awe by doing all these things, his proximity with cricketers, with filmsters, with filmdom and his patriotism, he inspired awe. And he exploited that to influence the other India where the millions of people live and millions of people give him money and all. So it's not his own money. Uh, he has this large depositors base and he claims to have uh, you know, larger, um, which is larger than um, the entire microfinance industry, which is larger than um, the number of demat, demat accounts India holds. Uh, so that's the kind of people he has. And he used their money uh, for his purpose. What, what was the um, account base that he had, Tamalu? I, I, I remember you you talked about this uh, with me earlier. Yeah, 30, 30 million. Three zero. Three zero million. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, tell us a little bit more on the glamour side of it. How does he? How does he get all of these guys on board? Does he actually finance movies? Where does he get his yes. hold from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, the, he. Uh, he, 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 he does finance movies also. Uh, if you see, he had, I think sometime uh, this year, I, I exactly don't remember which month was that, he had the Annaprasanam ceremony of his granddaughter. Oh, yes. Uh, that was uh, in Delhi's Ashoka Hotel, that was the event. I mean, whether it's a former president of India or Sachin Tendulkar or MS Dhoni or the Supreme Court judge or all the politicians, everybody else was there. So, he is, uh, everybody is his friend, whether it's Mulayam Singh or... Uh, you, you name it, I mean, uh, so he, he, as I said, he, he is a person who, who is close to all the cricketers, he is a person who is, all, uh, who is close to all the filmsters and he, ha he plays his patriotism card uh, very openly and all. So that's, that's how he attract all the depositors. I mean, everybody is in awe and uh, awe of him. Uh, and I have seen him, actually I attended, uh, I happened to be in his place uh, for the book to interview him and that happened to be his wedding anniversary. I have seen hundreds and thousands of people coming to him and touching his feet and he knows most of the people by name. So he's a people's man. I mean, uh, <laughs> give him his due. I mean, uh, regulators may find fault with him and uh, Supreme Court is um, finding fault with him and um, there are so many things happen and all. But uh, he has, uh, he knows uh, how to come close to people. Um, that, that's something very unique. Okay. Um, who are his main people? Who are the people who who help him run his empire. You talked about him being an entrepreneurial genius or somebody who's uh, uh, got a very, very sharp mind knowing which way to go when the going gets bad. But who are his main people? It's largely family run company. If you see, uh, if you look at the, um, uh, if you look at his um, employee role or it, it, it is his, uh, his sisters, his uh, children of his sisters, his own children, so on and so forth. So. Uh, he says that my, in my case, pro I asked him the question that you are not a professional, we don't see too many professionals in your, on your payroll at the, at the higher age law. He said, my, my, in, for me, professionalism is actually emotionalism. I, I bind people with, with an emotional you know, cord, so on and so forth. So he had, and also what he did is this, um, apparently uh, sometime in the 90s, he reached out to all the people 
who was with him with his uh, you know in his uh, his classmates in school and college uh, kind of things and all and some 80 people he tried to uh, reach out to them and many of them or rather most of them came back and uh, they are very close to him so uh, in his inner circle is this some of his school buddies and college buddies and mostly his his uh, very there are very few actually you will find that uh, who are real professional is mostly family run right but and, and obviously they are good at what they do well i mean um, that's the, <laughs> that's still open to i mean that's the attempt was that um, he is doing some work but whether actually uh, everybody wants to uh, everybody has the same question and trying to find an answer to that what is it doing? Is it ethical? Um, is he, what is it doing? Is it money laundering? Uh, what is it doing? Um, does it actually meet the legal requirements, so on and so forth? So um, you can, yes, till the time you prove the other way, uh, because it's not been proved. Um, so you have to accept that uh, what is it doing is good things. But I remember in um, sometime in late 90s, 1997 or so, uh, the income tax authorities sent him a note saying that um, we believe um, people and politicians uh, keep their unaccounted money with you. Uh, we want uh, you to furnish us full list and they gave a list of people who are mostly politicians like uh, former Prime Ministers P.B. Narasimha Rao and all were named there. So what Sahara did actually Sahara uh, they booked full page uh, in national media, in various newspapers, both English and Hindi, across India. And they actually published the note of the income tax authorities. And they gave names of all the people. And they said income tax authorities want to know that do these people keep money with us. And gave all the names of the politicians, the ministers, the congress leaders, and so on and so forth. And then said that we say that um, the none of them has actually kept money, and um, I am challenging you that the income tax authorities that come and search and prove that what I am telling is lie. So that that that, that is his stance. Right. A lot of gumption. Uh, in your interactions with him, did you get to figure out uh, who influenced him, or who are his big influencers? How did he get where he is in terms of, you know, his thinking, his personality, etc. Capable guys? Difficult to answer because, you know, when you have a largely unlisted entity, as I said, out of 4,000 odd companies, only four are listed entities. And you know, so actually, what to what extent is their contribution and to what extent is their father's doing and all, you don't know because they're never, uh, they're not in, the, in that sense, they're answerable to any regulators or so on and so forth. But uh, they're all uh, in, the, in the close circle and he himself claims that uh, they are pretty competent, they, they have been doing well, but actually to what extent, I mean, if you want to know that if after Subrata Roy, who, who right. is the, can they carry on um, and the, can the empire survive uh, after him, um, I would not be able to answer. But at this point of time, it's, it's, uh, it's a very a few close friend of him and his own children and the children of his uh, sister and all they are actually the um, they are running running the show along with him